Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian, and it is obviously giveaway time because I have yield ancient iPad here. I really need to do like a GoFundMe or something to get a new uh, new iPad. This is like an iPad 3. It's still per it still functions for this purpose, but I'd probably use a regular iPad more often on the channel, but there's knives to buy. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I digress. You guys want to know who won. After the end of this, I'm not going to make you guys wait too long to find out who won. And then afterwards, I'm going to directly answer some of the better questions that I got. Some of the ones that made me chuckle or I just thought were interesting. Uh, this is just random drawing. Obviously, I'm using the random comment picker thing. So uh, this is just random um, for, the, for the five that actually won a prize. But if you want to watch later and see if I picked your question, then, uh, then go do that. I apologize if I did not answer all of them. I tried to. Some of them were doubles, so I didn't do that. And some of them I just didn't get to because 968 individual commenters. So that's a lot of questions to answer. That's a lot of questions. So uh, let's get going. Without further ado, I'm not going to go through every prize package before I draw. We're just going to start them out. So I'll show them as I draw them. So the first one is a... Spyderco Tenacious Lightweight that I purchased my very self and I always intended to give away to you guys. Kind of wish I hadn't done that. I really like them. Uh, it's actually a pretty darn nice little knife. 40 some bucks and also a all tool from Keysmart. I realized I have two of them so you guys get your pick. You can get a little shark or a little bear depending on uh, which one you like better. I do have one of these on my keys. It's not an animal shaped. Well it's an owl shaped one but it just looks like a pry bar. But I do have one of these on one of my regular keys but um pretty cool little things so that is the fifth prize and let's start now the rules are before i click this button you guys got to know you have 48 hours to reply down below to say thank you or i saw it or whatever and email me your address at slicey dicey 75 at gmail.com i need to see both of those things because i need to make sure that you are who you say you are i don't want somebody to reply and say hey i won uh, i'm so and so username and you're not so reply down below say you saw it and then then email me because i won't send it to you unless i see a comment from the guy saying there or girl saying that he or she won it so let's get started we have red dog i don't know if i saw this one um is there any knife that you just love to hate? Kind of like how Nick Shabazz has the Z Hunter and Metal Complex has that SNW Extreme Honest Knife. Oh, probably the Dalica because Keith sent it to me. He never stops bothering me about it. Keith, on here. It's just, it's not even a knife. It's a knife shaped ob object made of plastic and some crap metal. Like you can't even cut yourself with it. It's the worst thing ever. I would say probably the Dalica. All right, let's queue up to pick another one here. Um, fourth prize is good question by the way that's a fun one uh so red dog reply down below 48 hours or i'm gonna put it on to the next giveaway or do another drawing or something with it uh next one is this tucson ts 182 i also got for you guys and uh, it is a titanium backspacer titanium liner locks carbon fiber and 4tc 28n version they're about 90 bucks when they were on white mountain I, they're probably a little less than that on the ebays and stuff that's where you mostly get these but a uh, pretty cool knife i do really like it there will be a review of this coming up i've already filmed it i just don't know when i'm going to put it up uh pretty cool knife uh and also you are going to get one of these and this remains true for all the rest of them in case i forget to mention it one of these little uh t ha you know t handle sets with the t68 t8 t10 excuse me um uh, this goes with all the rest of them all the rest of them are getting one of these as well but for this package you're just you're just getting these two things so fourth place let's go and we have brick brick uh what do you think are the most overrated knives i i got this question a lot and I'm not sure if I answered it specifically or not. Um, overrated. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm i going to get in trouble, but I don't remember what I said. Or maybe I just didn't answer it at all. Anyway, I'm, I'm so sick of hearing about how amazing Ganzos are. Fine. I know they're cheap and I know they're, I know they're fun and I know they're nice, but they do clones and I have no interest in them. 
I would say Ganzos. Even though they are really cheap, I still consider them overrated just because they do clones. They copy people's stuff. So I'm out right from the beginning. I don't care how nice they are. Don't care. Um, that's what I would say. That'll get me a lot of down votes. I don't care. Down votes, the, the, the algorithm likes that just as much. So it doesn't bother me. So Brooke, again, 48 hours to comment down below. Give me your, say that you saw this and give me your, then email me, give me your address and I will send you that Tucson and the Weha toolkit. Third, now it's getting serious. All right, we have the Weha toolkit, as always, from here on out. And a Ferrum Forge mini archbishop. This was courtesy of Ferrum Forge. Thank you guys so much for sending it to me. I did mention in the original thing, this is tan, this is the tan G10. Um, I'm pretty good at dyeing stuff now, and tan will take almost any color. I've got, what, Racing Red, Midnight Navy or something like that, uh, Royal Purple, and the Graphite here now. Um, if you want something else, I'll go buy it for you. I don't care. It's only 10 bucks, but go get it. Look up Rit Dye More on, like, Amazon and, you know, send me a link to what color you want. I'll give it a shot. Or you can just take it in the standard tan. It doesn't look bad. Not bad looking at all. But I love, I love the mini arch. It's a great, great, great knife. Mini archie is what they call it, which I think is, it's kind of cute. But I do like that a whole lot. So let's do, pick another winner for this. In the Weha Toolkit. Michael J. Baker. Again, you have 48 hours. You're on the clock. Uh, if you could pick any stand-up comedian to go on tour with, who would it be? Congratulations on 12,500 subs, and thank you for the awesome content. I don't think I answered this one. Again, I'm sorry. 968 questions. I missed some. Uh, Colin Quinn. I really, really, really like Colin Quinn. I had the opportunity to work with him very, very briefly one time, and he's the nicest human being I've ever met, and he's also very famous and gets huge crowds. So I would say uh, Colin Quinn. I really like him a whole lot. Uh, so again, Michael J. Baker, is that what it was? You have 48 hours. You were on the clock. Second place. Okay, this is a bit more stuff now. We're getting the serious ones. You have the Benchmade Bailout, the new version, the aluminum with the M4 steel and the glass breaker and stuff on it. You get this. You get a Southern Edge Knife Works t-shirt. This is the the version from Myrtle Beach Bike Week. It's pretty cool looking. It's a pretty cool shirt. It's black. Uh, and also you get, so we can find it here. The Weha Toolkit, of course. I apologize, my chair is being very squeaky today, of course. And you get this cool carbon fiber minimalist sort of wallet. Is that it? Yeah, I got everything. So now let's do her up. This is for second place. We have Sean Choi. Congrats, man. What are your favorite knives that most people in the knife community dislike or even hate? Wow, I don't think I saw this one either. I did not do a good job on this. Uh, what's my favorite one that people dislike or even hate? Um, hmm. At the moment, at the moment, I would say, even though I, because I, I used to hate it too, I would say the Spider Coast Smog. I know some people do really love it, but I still get some people just really hate it whenever I mention it. So I guess I'd say the Smog. That's probably not that great of an answer, but off the top of my head, uh, that's what I would say. So Sean, 48 hours, reply that you saw this, and then email me. Once I see both those things, it'll be in the mail to you. And now for the grand prize grand prize is this amazing one of one Olone goat this isn't going to show well uh with this weird lighting because i have to light weird because the ipad but um this is just an Olone goat that he custom anode so it's blue with blue shred carbon it is gorgeous m390 220 bucks these things go for they are fantastic I carry one all the time. I love the Olone, Olone, sorry, Olone goat. I was corrected on that. Olone goat. Uh, wonderful, wonderful knife. And this one is one of one. You also get from Southern Edge Knife Works. You get this really cool. I was corrected on what it was by Southern Edge Knife Works because I forgot when I did the drawing video. But this is a pairing knife. 
It's a VG10 Damascus paring knife, which is very pretty. Nice VG10 Damascus. Really cool kind of piano wood looking, you know, handles. It's it's super well done. Awesome little case it comes in. It has a little southern edge in, in Japanese logo on it. Uh, really, really neat. I I wish I, I almost just kept this one and just lied to you guys and didn't tell you about it. But uh, I think they probably would have noticed. <laughs> this is part of the grand prize along with the Ohlone. And you also get this very cool, which I'm wearing right now, actually. You will see when I you see me in the past, in the future. This Southern Edge long sleeve shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt. It's got the, you know, South Carolina logo on one arm. Other arm has the southernedgeknifeworks.com on it. And the back has what I like the most about it. I just like this. Always room for one more. Really cool. Uh, pretty neat. And, it, and I like wearing t-shirts say Myrtle Beach on them up here because all upstate New Yorkers, that's where we go to on vacation. I don't know why, but that's where we go. So I, I don't stick out. So here we go. This is the grand prize winner. i shake the camera a little bit for dramatic effect. And here we go. Who is it? Bruce Ross. Oh, I did answer this one. Uh, not an anticlimactic answer, but very climactic win. Uh, have you ever seen William Montgomery or or uh, ever seen William Montgomery on Kill Tony? I said I didn't know what that was. So, uh, but Bruce, congratulations. You are the grand prize winner. Again, 48 hours. Comment down below. Tell me you saw it and email me. And after 48 hours, I'll either redraw or it may wind up going to the next one. If it's a big one, I'm probably going to redraw. Maybe if it's like fifth prize or something, I'll just put it in the next one. But congratulations to the winners. And con and thank you guys again so much for helping me reach this goal. Ne never thought in a million years I'd get here. Um, never thought this would turn into my occupation between this and Knives Illustrated. It is my occupation now. Um, rapidly maybe becoming a... I may be knife media full-time. That may be my primary job. And I, I'll never quit stand-up, but... Uh, I'm, I love it. I love everything about this community. I love you guys. And I just, I appreciate so much all the support that I get. I, you guys have no idea um, what this has meant to me. I've been s floundering professionally other than stand up uh, for many years, not many years, the last few years. And uh, this has just meant so much to me. So, so much. Um, I, I can't express it. Uh, this is the best way I can express it is to call some people and ask them for, for, free, for some free stuff and, hand, and pass it on to you guys. Uh, but thank you guys again so much. And if you want to watch uh, answers to silly questions, it's coming up right now. Thanks again. Hello, everybody. So as promised, we are going to do the some of my favorite questions from the AMA. I've already done the drawing. I'm recording this before I do the drawing, but uh, I've already done the drawing so congratulations everybody who won again i probably already said that 50 times but here's 51 uh these are just some of my favorite questions that i got and oh by the way yeah one of the things i gave away was one of these shirts i told you i liked it i'm wearing it so there's a nice knife work shirt i really do like this shirt a lot i like long sleeve t-shirts it's kind of a jam but uh here are some uh questions that i liked that just i liked i just the ones that that i thought were interesting uh there's no like science involved in it or anything obviously but uh, first of all, I'm reading these off of some papers. I printed them up because I record everything on my phone, which is probably, I think, one of the questions in here. So I can't look at my little notes. So um, I printed them out. Here we go. Uh, Robin Kim asked, uh, when trimming your knife collection, how do you pick knives to sell among those you actually like? Do you simply rank order them? Do you categorize them somehow, then get rid of the least liked in the category? Do you not think about it too much and just go with your gut? I, I answered this one and why I wanted to put it on the video. Um, I don't know exactly what I said in the answer. I'm paraphrasing. But uh, a lot of you, that's the most common question I get all the time. I'll do knife sale videos and people say, well, why did you sell that? Well, because I got to feed the beast primarily is what I always say. Like to keep this channel going. Yeah, I will sell stuff I really like, but I have no plans for it going forward. And it just doesn't quite reach that, you know, uh, forever kind of level. So uh, I'll I'll let it go, and sometimes I reacquire them. I just did a video of knives so nice I bought them twice. I, sometimes I reacquire them, if, especially if it's like a production knife that I know I can get another one, but I don't have any videos coming up for it, and it say it's worth you know two three hundred bucks. I'm like, well, yeah, I could get rid of that and get four budget knives to do content with. So um, don't judge anything when I sell it on any 
sort of like that means I didn't like it or I was lying in the video when I said I liked it. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means uh, it just had to go. Um, I counted up all my knives the other day and I wait, don't ever do that. It was, it was hard. I can't believe how many I had and I was kind of upset about it. So there's gonna be a lot coming up uh, soon before Blade Show. But yeah, that that's basically my criteria is just like, do I have anything planned for it? I only have like probably, you know, 13, 14 that are like really like I don't ever want to let go. And everything else is uh, kind of a commodity to a point. Um, next up, uh, Anthony Clark asks, uh, hey, man, thanks for all the awesome content. You're very welcome. It's really sharp and on point. I see what you did there. Uh, so what advice would you give someone who wants to start a YouTube channel about knives, gear, etc.? Is there a rookie knife vlogger should watch out for? Any tips or pitfalls? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Now, first of all, don't. There's enough of you. I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's, there are a lot now, and there's more springing up every day. Uh, in, in, and and I, like, I like a lot of them, so I, I'm, I'm joking about the don't do it, that there's too many. It's, it's fine. Uh, but, um, Anthony, I would say uh, be unique. I think that is what got me to rapidly approaching 15,000 subs was... Um, I was a bit different. I have a bit of a unique voice. Part of that just comes from I've, I've been in the entertainment industry for a long time and it just and, and been writing and doing reviews and I already kind of had a, a personality and a review style set before I started. Um, a lot of guys it's going to take a long time to find that and that's absolutely fine. Uh, you may find that I know lots of guys have struggled at that 100, 200, 300 sub level for like a year and God bless them for sticking with it and then finally they found their voice. This isn't any kind of entertainment. These are entertainment. Yes, they are to provide information, but they are entertainment. And in any form of entertainment, we call it finding your voice. And it takes a while. It takes some people longer than others. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you just have to figure out how I word it is what what your words sound like coming out of your face. And like I've written jokes that I love in, in stand up, but I know that I can't do them because they're terrible coming out of my face. And I'll give them to somebody else if they don't want them or whatever, or they just get thrown away one way or the other. You just and I've come up with ideas for videos that I think are really good ideas for videos, but not from me. Uh, and I'll maybe suggest them to some other YouTuber. Say, hey, maybe you should do a video about this. And it's just you have to figure out your own voice and, and stick with it. And hopefully, and if, especially if people like it, people seem to somewhat like my style, so I just stick with it. And uh, and that's it. You got to be unique. That is the most important thing. Uh, R.E.W. asked, this sounds like a boring question, but I, it, it is a recent obsession of mine, so I wanted to answer it on camera. Brian, uh, what type of shoes do you wear? Any favorite styles or brands? I am becoming kind of a sneaker nerd. I, I'm pretty good so far. Um, I used to always wear Asics tennis shoes, so I have a bunch of really brightly colored Asics, uh, you know, Game 5, Game 6, you know, tennis shoes that um, are too worn out to wear on the court, but I still wear around. And now I've kind of gotten into Adidas. So I've got a couple of pairs. What do I have on now? I think I'm wearing, yep. I got a pair of Superstars right now. I love these. These are kind of my winter shoes. That's why they look kind of gross. Um, I have some uh, Sambas, Adidas Sambas. I like those a lot. Um, I'm kind of into Jordans. Uh, not, a, not much. I've just got one pair that I really love, and I kind of want one more. But uh, I have a pair of uh, Jordan Retro Ones that are all monochrome black that I wear on stage a lot. And then um, there's another one I like. But as far as like functional shoes at Keens, I used to be sponsored by them. I'm not anymore. Now I have to go pay full retail for them like everyone else. But I used to get them for free and then I got them for half price for years. And now I have to go buy them like normal people. But yeah, if I'm out hiking or biking or it's wind, it's snowy out. Keen Targi 2s, Keen Sandals during the summer, stuff like that. Um, so they, yeah, I, I like shoes. They're cool. I have way too many. I have, I have more shoes than my wife by a wide margin. Um, prepared Hippie 520, his question was, uh, what would your knife EDC related, what is, what would be your knife EDC related dream job? Uh, I'm doing it. It's this. Uh, this with 100,000 subs, I think is what I answered because that would be a sustainable income. Um, but I'm doing this. I'm also working now with Knives Illustrated. Actually, if you go to knivesillustrated.com in the news section, the, the first article up there, that's me. I'm, I'm writing on their website. I'm writing on the, the print magazine. Um, I'm going to be involved in that. So the, the media side of the knife industry is, is, is my dream job. And that's what I want to do. And I'm doing it here. And now I'm going to be doing Knives Illustrated as well. Uh, but it, you know, if I, I just start with Knives Illustrated. I, I, I really like it so far. One of my 
really good friends is the editor of it, which I didn't know until I got the job, but uh, or until right before I got the job, and um, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun doing that too. But I really like the video stuff. I really really do, and I'm gonna try and put more video content on Knives Illustrated. But Slicey Dicey will never go away. That is something I made very very clear to them. Uh, when I started, when I was in the interview process, was I'm never going to stop the YouTube channel. And they were like, we don't want you to. So, because uh, obviously I'm going to funnel some people over there from here to over there. And yeah, go check out KnivesIllustrated.com. And especially in the March 24th issue that's coming out. I've, I've got three articles in there. Three articles in the next one. So, uh, but yeah, the, this media side is, is what I would like, uh, what I like the most. Because it's what I'm familiar with. It's what I did in the bike industry. It's what I did here. And it's fun to write about something you're passionate about or do videos about something you're passionate about. Uh, Taurus Kukarian. I'm, I'm pretty good with foreign names, but uh, Taurus Kukarian is what I'm going to guess that is. Uh, this, this one I just thought was funny. Uh, have you ever used or encountered in prison made knives? No, and I hope I never do because it probably means I'm in prison. No, I haven't. I don't ever want to. Um, I'm sure he meant, I'm sure there's like exhibits somewhere or something of them, but I just thought that was funny. Uh, Mr. C asked, uh, what do you actually use to record audio video for your content here? Uh, iPhone XS Max is what I'm on right now. Uh, I hate it. It's fine for this, but as a phone, it's the worst iPhone I've had. And I've had, I, I had the original iPhone and then I do the two year upgrade cycle. So I've had every other one since the OG. I think I'm, this is my seventh one I've had or something like that. Um, I don't know, just some things about it I don't like. It's it's the most unreliable when I had it crashes all the time. I had a 6 Plus when I started. Actually, it's still right here. I use it as a kind of backup or if I need two cameras, sometimes I'll use I'll use this still. Um, I, and then I do have a Rode uh, mic that I will use occasionally. But honestly, the, the sound levels on it are weird. It's, it, it sounds crisp and perfect and awesome, but it's hard to get the level high enough up. I'm sure this isn't that great either because I'm recording from the front mic right now. But um, I mostly just use the iPhone. It just easy. I and I, I'm getting so now. I've even started mostly doing most of my editing as little as I do. I do very very little editing. If I'm eight minutes into a 14 minute video and I screw up, I'll start it over again before I edit it and cut it together. But but I'm gonna do more of that now because I've gotten good with Adobe Premiere Rush on the iPhone and I'm gonna do more editing. That's that's one of my uh, late New Year's resolutions. I'm starting to do is more editing. So uh, I'll be I'll be doing more of that. Uh, but yeah, mostly iPhone. It's really all that you need. It's perfectly fine for YouTube resolution and all that stuff. Uh, Brandon Y asked, a lot of people asked this one, so I put it in, but uh, Brandon Y, I think was the first one, said, uh, what knife do you regret selling most? Currently, the uh, Benchmade Anthem. You guys saw, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff back that I regretted. So currently, it would be the Benchmade Anthem. Um, I really missed that thing. It was just cool. Uh, THS tie. This tie. This tie is how we're going to say it. Um, I thought this was interesting because I get asked this by comedians all the time too. Uh, you end practically every video with what sounds like, thank you very much, I've been Brian. Are you actually saying Ben Brian? Is there existential reasoning in that? Or do I need to have my hearing existentially checked? Uh, no, it's, I, when I first started doing stand up, I don't know why I said that, but I said it all the time at the end of a set. I've been Brian Ball, have a good night or I've been Brian, have a good night, whatever. And uh, some other comedians caught on to it and some of them made fun of me about it. And then now some of the people who I've like, I'm not like a comedy veteran exactly. I've only been doing it like a little less than 11 years, um, which sounds like a long time, but for a comedian, it's really not that. But um, when I started out, I ran an open mic and a lot of uh, young, really young, really young comedians, you know, looked up to me and I was, I was trying to help them out a little bit. And, and some of them do it. Uh, and one of them I know does it, who's actually, he's 23 and way more successful than me, uh, Austin LaFont, a uh, very funny guy, if you had a chance to see him, um, based out of Chicago now, I think, but, uh, I know he does it, and he said he does it because, because I did it, and he, he thought it was cool, so he says I've been Austin LaFont. Uh, I'm not the first person who said it, by any means, uh, other comedians and performers have said it before me, and we'll say it since, but, uh, that's why, it's from my stand-up, and, uh, I just keep doing it. It become kind of a catchphrase, so uh, that's why I do it. Uh, next up is uh, Erica with a K. That's her username. I'm not just being specific. Uh, what would you grab if zombies were breaking down your door? Like impulse, grab it and go without a lot of time to think. Um, 
I know what I answered on there, and I would say my Cold Steel uh, Formax, and uh, also I would wake up because zombies don't exist. I'm so sick of zombie crap. I'm so sick of zombie movies and zombie TV shows. They're, they're not real. It's never going to happen. Stop worrying about it. Stop worrying about it. But if you are really worried, Formax is a pretty good choice. Um, Doug Gonzalez, are you one of those rare and few who were, are doing exactly what you want to do in life or is there something else that you you always wanted to be when you grew up there are so many choices in life and i'm always interested in whether folks are actually doing what they really want and as always thank you for your generosity and congrats on 12.5 well um I, I had no plans as a teenager like uh i was racing bikes a little bit i thought that would probably be part of my life but i never considered it to be a job and it never really completely was yes i was a pro mountain biker but was not a full-time wage uh, i wasn't like a good one i was a like bottom of the barrel you know barely made the field kind of pro guy i'm sorry my dog's barking she's obnoxious today um but uh and then like i, I did a, a tiny 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 infinitesimal amount of car racing i, I kind of thought maybe i could be a race car driver but you have to have a lot of money to do that um and I really enjoyed that. But, like, it was stupid childish things that I wanted to do. I never had, like, a career path plan. Uh, I went to a uh, community college for criminal justice because my friend did. And my parents insisted I go to college. And I just went with my buddy. Um, was not at all interested in it. Realized that very, very quickly. Switched over to criminal law. I did that for a year. And then I, I quit altogether and went in the Air Force. And, um... Uh, I had never had any plans. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I was probably um, 20, in my late, late 20s. And uh, I just realized I don't want to work for anybody anymore. I want to be my own boss. And, um, and I liked writing. I knew I wanted to be a writer somehow. And I didn't care what I was writing. I just wanted to be a writer and have the freedom to put my own voice into stuff. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that pretty early on. And it all worked out now, uh, but now I'm happy to uh, have a have a job where I'm actually gonna get a regular paycheck again. So that that's nice too. That's the only problem. People think working for yourself is amazing. It usually is, but sometimes hey, it's nice to know that that paycheck's arriving on the first and the fifteenth. I'll tell you that, or like you know, next Friday or the Friday after or whatever. Yeah, that that aspect is not fun. Uh, so no, I had no plans. I just uh, just landed in what I landed in. And lastly. Uh, and we have a Chinook going by, so that's lovely. Uh, Elijah Nation asks, uh, here's my question. What's your least favorite knife from a reputable knife manufacturer? So not M-Tech, Tag Force, etc. Uh, that knife that you just could not get behind at all. Maybe one that everyone loved and you just could not. Well, I don't have any that everyone loved. But uh, I will say, primarily, first up, the Benchmade Aileron. Did not understand that a bit. I didn't get it. It's one of the, like, grip tape blade. It would have been fine if it didn't have the grip tape blade stuff and... It was actually not a horrible knife, but that grip tape two hand open fighting thing, it was designed for like pilots to fight people inside their planes or something. I just didn't get it at all. I didn't like it. And uh, the other one was the uh, Wee Knives Sticks. I think it was the Sticks. Because the Jix is the smaller one, which wasn't as horrible. But the, it was a Willemson design, the Sticks. Um, I just did not, it was uncomfortable in my hand and I just didn't like it. Um, I would say those are the two uh, that I've reviewed that really stick out. There's been more than that, but those are the two that really just come to mind is where they were just like, I was just like, what? What? I just didn't even know what to say in the reviews. Like, I was flummoxed. I have another one coming up, but that's not out yet. So when that review comes up, that one, I don't know what I'm going to say about it. I've had the knives for like two months. I don't even know what to say. So look forward to that. Um, I almost just sent them back, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and thank you guys so, so much. Again, I know I said it in the previous part in the future but past me knows that future me is going to say it because i guess i'm telling him right now it's timey wimey stuff um thank you guys so much for subscribing and supporting the channel over these last uh two plus years i really really do appreciate it and there's a lot more to come uh we may be hitting fifteen thousand subs very quickly actually uh, my birthday is april 28th really hope i hit 15 by my birthday i was aiming for blade show but i think i'm gonna hit it before my birthday so uh, thank you guys so, so much again, and congratulations to all the winners, and I hope you enjoyed my answers to your silly questions. Not all of them are silly. Some were really great, but I like silly questions. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Again, have a good one.